You know, fun fact is that I didn't actually have this episode planned. I was just playing Toontown Rewritten recently and I thought, you know what, I'm going to review it. So here we go. Toontown Rewritten is a fan remake of the original game Toontown Online. Now here's a little backstory of Toontown Online. You see, Toontown Online was a game produced by Disney in whatever year. After a while, and for it being open for a long time, Disney opened up a new program known as Club Penguin, where it's literally the exact same thing, except of minor differences. And then they closed Toontown because they thought Crap Penguin was better. <sighs> because everyone loved and cherished the game so much, after a while, a, co a couple of guys, I assume, cre recreated the game in Toontown Rewritten. So now that the backstory is done, let's talk about the actual story of Toontown Rewritten. Now when it comes to Toontown Rewritten, its story is... kind of vague, I'd say. Because it doesn't really give you an exact plot, it kind of just throws you in, just like the Neverhood did. But you eventually learn exactly what's going on. So you play as a tomb, which can be a dog, or a rabbit, a cat, whatever. And you need to defeat the cogs. The cogs are, are robotic, like, businessmen that try to take over the, the entire Toontown in general. And... Yeah, you have to try and stop them as as you try and take and destroy their uh, like L, everything kind of. You traverse through multiple different areas, such as Toontown Central, Donald's Dock, Daisy Gardens, or Ma Minnie's Melody Land. As you may notice, these are all named after different Disney cartoon characters, as you, uh, obviously. Except for Berg, because for some reason, the Berg decided to belong to Pluto. For whatever reason. The main basis of this game is an RPG, meaning that you would have to walk up to the enemies and you would have to fight them using turns. However, this entire game is online, meaning that you can play with a bunch of different people and friends, so that they can fight in battles alongside you. When it comes to the battles, you actually have to use gags. Yes, gags. Different kinds of hilarious little objects that people that would usually be seen in cartoons, I would say. They vary in different categories, such as fro, squirt, drop, etc. And using them, you can use such as throwing pies, squirting the cogs, or even placing a trap down for them to be lured into. Over time, as you use these different gags, you can you can get more powerful gags for each different category. Now, like of every RPG, there is your source of health. In this game, it's known as Laugh, but it's not spelled with the GH. It is spelled spe instead spelled L A F F for just to be hilarious, because that's what this entire game is. However, when playing for this game, you can run out of gags. When you run out of gags, you have to go ride the trolley to compete in minigames with di different people. Now, when it comes to the minigames, there are, I consider that there are three kinds of minigames. The ones that you hate, the ones that you despise, and MEMORY GAME. When you compete in these minigames, then usually you would win jelly beans, which are basically your currency. Then, then you immediately be teleported to the gag shop for whatever reason to spend them in there. To buy more gags, obviously. Another large basis of this game is its tune tasks, basically the side quests which are considered also as the normal quests. Main, mainly, the main tune tasks that you can take on are the tune tasks that are able to progress you further into the game and to get more gag tracks. These gag tracks you need in order to get m to learn more gags, such as squirt, or no wait, not squirt, uh, um, something else, like more, more, you, yeah. Of course, it's not always just to get more gags. Sometimes it can be teleport access to that area, more laugh, carrying up to more jelly beads, or just the fun ones of which you, your tune can be made small or big, or you just get a bunch of jelly beads. Whenever you take on these two tasks, you usually have to walk up to a building of which the person inside, the main person of said building, would give you something to do, such as delivering a package somewhere, finding a passage package by going fishing, or fighting cogs for it. 
However, not the buildings are not always going to be open freely. You see, sometimes a cog can walk into the buildings and they can make them cog buildings. Cog buildings are basically one to five story buildings that you can you and your friends should usually take on. These buildings have lots of cogs that you have to, that you have to face on each floor. The cogs can be more powerful than they should be in that area. As you progress through the game, you uh, at some points you would encounter the factories and HQs. You see, each each cogs are set to their own like kind of category. There is the cell bots, the cash bots, the law bots, and the boss bots. Each one has their own factory and HQ, each of which are very difficult. These are when you have to fight the main boss of each category, whether it be the VP or the CJ or yeah. Normally, you would have to go through the buildings in order to collect different items to take on the, the boss in the HQ. I mean, they are, are, are a HQs, it's just that the factory is part of it, and yeah, you get what I mean. Warning, incoming is spoilers for the VP. The VP, I have not, is the only COG boss that I have experienced. I have not experienced any other COG bosses. When taking on the VP, specifically, you would need to have at least eight people. Yeah, which is basically the max, so you would have to have a lot of friends. You and your- you and eight people, including yourself, would have to take on the VP. Four on one side and four on another. You have to defeat all of the cogs that he sends out. Then, you will wa walk up to a high level and take on Skelecogs. Once you defeat the Skelecogs, then you take on the VP himself, which is basically the hardest part of the fight. You and your friends have to, have to throw pies at the VP as you slowly but surely push him off the edge. After the VP, I'm not entirely sure what happens. That This is my experience of the game so far. So we're just going to move straight to the presentation of the game, I'd say. Or what the game looks like. And I'm going to describe how the game looks like in two words. It's cartoonish. The game, as you would probably expect, looks extremely cartoonish as if you were playing a, a video game based on a Saturday cartoon. That's an extra few, by the way. And yeah, that's basically all I have to say for that. And because of its cartoonish environment, you wouldn't expect to be afraid of the cogs at first sight. Except the headhunters. Those things terrify me. There's also the fact that the flunkies kind of look like old men, but they're still pretty tough to beat, I'd say. Like, I know a friend of mine who went sad to a flumpty, Flunky, I mean, and he, I didn't hear from him for a week. Poor guy. On a side note, this music, the music in this game is actually pretty good, I'd say. The music kind of feels like you're on an adventure, especially when you're in the cog building battles. And a little, uh, kind of thing they put in there is that whenever you're in the cog HQ and fighting cogs in there, then the theme song cha changes to a more darker tone because you're about to take on the boss of said building, or HQ. Well, I've gone brain dead and cannot think of any more things to say about Toon Time Rewritten, so I'm just going to leave you leave you guys here, and I'd say go play the game, it's really freaking fun! <laughs> And I'll, I guess I'll see you guys next week with my next review. That is, if you don't know already from the MPA Direct, or you can't recognize the music, it's...